So for fun, I thought I'd try and go through the Chocker blog information in about five minutes. If you want more detail, go to the more detailed videos. So we're going to show there's a nine billion onshore deficit gap that exists between Scotland and the rest of the UK because Scotland's an expensive country to serve. We're going to show that oil and gas revenues sometimes more than filled that gap so that Scotland has often been a net contributor. And we're going to show that the outlook for oil and gas is bleak and a lot worse than was shown in the white paper. Our source of data is the JAIRS numbers, Government Expenditure and Revenue Scotland. They come from the Scottish Government. They qualify as national statistics. Here's what that means. It means we can trust them. So what we're going to look at is numbers in real terms, that is adjusted for inflation. We're going to compare Scotland with the rest of the UK and we're going to look at per capita differences. So let's look at our onshore revenue generation. We have various revenue streams. We generate more in sin taxes, we, dress, we generate less in wealth taxes. If you add all these together, we generate about £250 per person less very consistently. But of course we have offshore revenues which range from £500 to £2,500 more in the last 15 years. And if we add these two together, you get our total tax generation which is the sum of those two lines, we generate more in tax per capita than the rest of the UK and we have done consistently. But of course we spend more too. Here are lots of spend categories. You can dig into the detail, we can discuss them. But the bottom line, if you add it all together, we generate about one and a half thousand pounds, or sorry, we uh, spend about one and a half thousand pounds more per capita in Scotland than the rest of the UK. So if you combine those two lines, what we generate in black in terms of tax and what we spend in red in terms of public spending. When black exceeds red, we're a net contributor to the UK. So we can plot the difference between those two lines and that is our per capita deficit difference above the line we contribute, below the line we benefit. This is on a per capita basis, that's on a percent GDP basis. Toggle between the two, it doesn't make a difference, but doesn't make a huge difference other than percent GDP, you can say in two of the last four years, Scotland was a net contributor. More importantly, the white paper was based on five years during which we did net contribute or we certainly paid our way and we were more than paying our way in the most recent year. But of course, two more years have emerged since then. So what? Well, so what? Oil is important is the first point to make, because if you look at our total higher expenditure and lower onshore tax revenue generation, that explains the deficit gap, about £1,700 per person, a £9 billion onshore deficit gap, which is sometimes washed away by oil and gas revenues. And when oil and gas revenues decline, we just see more of that deficit gap exposed. And that deficit gap is because we spend more, far more than because we generate less in terms of economic efficiency. That's a 15 year period. Let's look at the longer period. So again, that's our higher spend. That's the average higher spend. That's oil and gas income. So sometimes 1980s, massive oil boom, Scotland, massive contributor, beneficiary, paying our way, becoming a beneficiary again. So what? Well, when you look at this and you look at that 9 billion deficit gap and you look at the importance of oil and gas, you cannot say that oil is just a bonus. Asserting that doesn't make it so. So we have to look at oil and gas. Let's look at the forecasts that were made coming into the referendum. These are the forecasts that were used in the white paper. There was the OBR forecast that existed at that time. The Scottish Government created four optimistic forecasts and used two optimistic forecasts for Scotland's future. Well before the referendum in September, there were re-forecasts done. The OBR were indeed shown to be optimistic and reduced their forecast. So now the Scottish Government had to create new forecasts, which they did, and they added an additional forecast to support the white paper. So at this point, it was clear that the Scottish Government forecasts used in the white paper were incredibly optimistic compared to the Office for Budget Responsibility. They were not budgeting responsibly. We know what happened. Actually, the OBR has now downgraded their forecast as more information has come out. And so Scotland's future was predicated on unrealistic oil revenue forecasts. What do we know about the trends in oil revenue? Well, I'll do this very quickly. So this is oil revenue and this is oil price. And if you plot the ratio between the two, you get oil revenue tax generation productivity. So for the same oil price, if we were maintained the same tax generation productivity, this would be a horizontal line. But actually what happens is we became more and more productive in terms of generating tax into 2000, since which the tax generation productivity has been in terminal decline. And that's because things are getting more expensive in the North Sea. So we can pause for breath. We've shown these three points. So what? Well, so what? is if we're going to close that deficit gap, we need to raise taxes or cut public spending. 
and we might be able to raise those taxes just by growing the economy. We'll look at whether that's realistic and we'll look at EU comparisons to decide whether we think this tells us anything about Scotland's economy. So first of all, how much do we need to raise in tax? The IFS said a 7.6 billion gap. That number is basically the 9 billion that we've just looked at becoming exposed by for falling oil and gas revenues. I think we can take that number as 8 billion without getting lost in the detail of why that is. So where do we find £8 billion? Well, this is how much we generate in tax and where we generate it from. So we generate about £50 billion onshore and then there's oil and gas on top of it. So that's our revenue generation real terms over the last 15 years. And here's where we spend the money, real terms over the last 15 years. And so the difference between those two is the deficit, real terms, last 15 years. Most recent year, £12 billion deficit, £4 billion oil and gas. So... We generate 50 billion, 16 onshore, 16% 16 of that is 8 billion. So see if you can find 8 billion out of these numbers. Maybe, of course, we can do that just by growing the economy by 16%. Well, let's look at what the white paper said. The white paper said that company countries that had the bonus of being independent are able to make the right choices for their nation and economy. If Scotland had matched those levels of growth over this 30-year period, we'd have grown 3.8% more than we did. Let's just have a wee think about that. So what they're saying is an arbitrarily chosen set of companies over an arbitrary 30-year time period grew 3.8% more than we did, 0.12% a year superior growth. So basically what Scotland's future said was that over 30 years achieving an additional 3.8% growth would be a reasonable target and we're looking for 16%. 30 years for 3.8 percent so to suggest that we'll close that gap through economic growth in any time scale less than decades is is fantasy so does it matter well let's look at ourselves in comparison with the eu figures eu tends to look at net lending borrowing which is basically a function of the deficit so if we compare first of all scotland the red line with the uk the black line the uk has run a surplus within our lifetimes um, but we can see it tracks and then diverges because of oil and gas revenues declining if we didn't if we just keep oil and gas revenues out this is the oil is just a bonus line this is scotland excluding oil and gas revenues and let's put that in the context of lots of other eu countries so i'm just toggling between so you can keep track and so what you see okay norway runs a massive surplus let's just focus in a bit you can see that Scotland without oil and gas is running a really bad deficit and surely unsustainable within an EU context. Even with oil and gas, right now we find ourselves in a not great position. And by the way, the UK in total is not in a great position either. So let's look at where that puts us. Well, OK, there's Norway's surplus, Germany running a surplus. There's the UK. There's where Scotland should be. Let's focus in on that. So Scotland running its deficit at 8.6% compared to the UK at 4 point something percent compared to the EU Stability and Growth Pact excessive deficit threshold of 3%. Scotland, standalone, because of the loss of oil and gas, would be incurring an unsustainable deficit. We can confidently say that you wouldn't fix that through economic growth. That is it. I hope you found that enjoyable. Visit Chocker Blog, follow me on Twitter, and if you look on YouTube, you'll find all of this material presented at a far more leisurely pace for those of you who want to take more time to understand it. Thank you.